Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out Top 10 British Punk Bands. All those anti-establishment slip on your Duck Martins and say oi. Welcome yeah. to Watch Mojo oi. UK and today we'll be counting down our picks for the Top 10 British Punk Bands. Awesome. Before we be okay, I know Sex Pistols is going to be on here. The Clash? And I, I am surprised that there are 10 British punk bands that could make a list. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe for more great content. Good advice. For this list, we're focusing on those groups integral to the punk rock movement, be it thanks to their unique revolutionary style, or simply for just raising hell whenever given the chance. Cool. So move over, Ramones, yeah. it's the Brits' turn. Number 10, The Addicts. Originally hailing as Afterbirth and The Pins, this Ipswich-based bowler hat-wearing group of rockers found success as the Addicts in the 80s, with a relatively tame style, lyrically anyway, with songs like Chinese Takeaway and Songs of Praise. <laughs> An iconic dress sense inspired by the brutal droogs from A Clockwork Orange and lead singer Keith oh. Monkey Warren usually caked in clown makeup, the Addicts undoubtedly made a splash and produced some classic fist-in-the-air punk anthems with the likes of Viva La Revolution and Bad Boy. You've got to respect their theatrical commitment. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard of The Addicts, but that's a great name for a punk band. I like the makeup. It's flirting with glam rock a bit. I like the lighthearted lyrics. You know, punk bands are usually pretty anti-establishment and rebellious, but sometimes they're really funny too. And I like that. As an audio engineer, I think it would be really fun to record a punk band because the instrumentation is really simple and you can just focus on getting a good drum sound, a good guitar sound, a good vocal sound. You're not having to worry about strings and a bunch of keyboards and obscure production stuff. It's just four musicians, rock band. And if it sounds bad, if it sounds a little grungy or kind of crappy, that's actually better. You know, that's fun. Anyway, who's next? Number nine, Stiff Little Fingers. <laughs> Great name. This band was the result and answer to the bitter Northern Ireland conflict of the 70s. Bursting from Belfast mm. to the tune of Jake Byrne's unmistakable angst-filled vocals, Stiff Little Fingers has one of the most rock-solid back catalogues in punk. But it's the band's first album, Inflammable Material, that is largely regarded as their finest work and is a 13-track middle finger that plays effortlessly from start to finish and opens with one of punk's greatest hits, Suspect Device. Along with other foot-tapping tunes like Straw Dogs and the controversial Beirut Moon, they've endured a long career that stays strong to this day, thanks to Jake Byrne sticking with the band through thick and thin. Ooh! Number 8, The Jam. I like their drummer. He's playing some really cool beats. Some some beats that a lot of punk drummers wouldn't play. Like, almost like fast hip-hop. And they're still around today, huh? Now, being from Belfast, I think that would give them a lot of uh, emotional content to write about. Oh, after six years and four albums, they split up. Oh, but they reformed. In 2014, they released another album. Oh my god, I thought that was recent, but it's actually ten years ago. <laughs> Time is crazy. Great name. Stiff Little Fingers. Yeah. Great punk band name. Number 8, The Jam. The Jam. One of the most commercially successful bands on this list, The Jam has resonated on multiple different platforms over the years, including general pop culture and film, thanks in part to timeless tunes like A Town Called Malice and the huge solo success of frontman Paul Weller, aka The Mob Father. Hang on, Paul Weller was in this band? I've heard of Paul Weller. That doesn't really sound like punk music to me. There's an acoustic guitar in a punk band? This is, now Wikipedia is saying they're an English rock band, not a punk band. And that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing rock, not punk. It launched the career of Paul Weller. Wah. Good for you, Paul. They're probably one of the most polished punk bands ever, with their surprisingly debonair appearance on stage and wide net of influences, including prog rock, which many punk fans would turn their noses up at. Yeah. Their style did become less synonymous with punk as the years went on, but there's no doubt that they hold a significant place in the annals of the genre's history.
It's always funny to watch a drummer uh, play along in a video because you can tell that whoever is directing them has told the drummer to play softly. So in the recording, it sounds like the drums are being hit really hard, but in the video, it looks like they're barely touching. <laughs> it's so <funny>. history. <laughs> Number seven, X-Ray Specs. Great name. Now this is a band that truly did claw out its own niche in the highly populated punk zone. Whether it's the sassy female vocals of polystyrene, or the ear-blistering sweet sax riffs which hook you, Specs is sure to get you moving, be it with the day the world turned dayglow or artificial. Her name is... Polly Polly what? Whether it's the sassy female vocals of Polly Styrene or the <laughs> ear-blistering <laughs> sweet sax riffs which hook you. That's great. Their debut album, Gym Free Adolescence, is widely regarded as one of the most explosive punk albums ever, and it didn't even feature the band's most popular single, Oh Bondage Up Yours. It's baffling to think that even with a gut-wrenching debut tour de force like Gym Free, the band took almost 20 years to release another album. Great name, X-Ray Specs. Great name of a singer, Polly Styrene. I don't really care for the sound of her voice. Maybe it's just the songs that I'm hearing. You know, it would be, this is making me realize, I would love to have heard Janis Joplin sing in a punk band. I think her voice would fit really well. <laughs> Number six, the adverts. Characterized by witty lyrics, prolific live performances, and energetic frontman Tim Smith, or TB Smith as he was popularly known, the adverts certainly made a mark. There's something about this band that's hard to put your fingers on, in a good way. They're not quite as visceral as some bands, but they're not as fluffy as others. Just listen to classics like mm. Gary Gilmore's Eyes, One Chord Wonders, or pretty much anything from their first and only album, Crossing the Red Sea with the adverts, and you'll see what we mean. Unfortunately for the world of music, the adverts were only on the scene from 1976 to 1979, but in their short stretch they did it all, from the John Peel sessions to supporting Iggy Pop. I have not heard of the adverts. Looking at them, I would have predicted that they were from 1985, but they're from the late 70s? 76 to 79. They were way ahead of their time. Look, see, look at these, these sunglasses. You wouldn't, I... I wouldn't expect to see that in the 70s. That's an 80s thing. That's so crazy. These guys were doing it way ahead. Who is Gary Gilmore? He was saying that, um, oh, American murderer. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay, wow. Great name for a song then for a punk band. Gary Gilmore was an American criminal who gained international attention for demanding the implementation of his death sentence for two murders he had admitted to committing in Utah after the Supreme Court upheld a new series of death penalty statutes in 76 decision. He became the first person in almost 10 years to be executed in the U.S. I like when punk bands add humor into their lyrics. Humor is a sign of genius, y'all. That's my, that's what I think. If someone's really funny, they're probably really smart. Number five, Crass. I haven't heard of them either. These guys aren't just a band, they're an anarcho-punk brand. That sounds terrible. They personify <laughs> everything to do with anti-conformism, from their uncouth ways of promoting their music via graffiti and hoaxes like Thatchergate, look it up, to their instantly recognizable iconic logo. And we haven't even talked about their music yet. 30 seconds of pretty much any of their tracks will have you bouncing off the walls ready for a mosh pit, especially Have a Nice Day and Bloody Revolutions. And with the band's mm. numerous different band members, each of their songs felt like it could take an erratic turn in a totally new direction at any time. Many will say that if you don't recognize the Crass logo, then you don't know punk. Oh, well, I've never heard of Crass, but that is, that's a great name for a punk band. At first, the first sound clip that I heard it sounded like crap. I was thinking they should have changed their name to crap. But the second sample I heard sounded good. Like, good as in, this is how a punk band should sound. So it's, it's a little gross. A little, little edgy and thin and crappy. Like, that's good. I feel like really good punk recordings sound like an angry chihuahua. Like it's small, but like vicious. You know? Number four, Buzzcocks. I have heard of them. I think they're from Manchester. Are they? 
It's true the buzz cuts were quite poppy, and they knew it and they owned it. Arguably Good. the first pop punk band ever, they managed to bridge the gap between overly commercialized finger clicking pop and anarchy laced punk with snappy chord ripping and hooks that came out of nowhere, Great. and at the time that was completely unparalleled. Songs like Orgasm Addict and Ever Fallen In Love prove that the Buzzcocks knew how to smash out an instant classic. Nice. Oh yeah! And in fact their singles compilation album, Singles Going Steady, is largely regarded as one of the greatest <laughs> punk albums of all time, and it's a compilation album. They're a perfect example of how you can borrow tools from other genres and masterfully create something totally unique. Great, I love the Buzzcocks. That's interesting that they were the first to kind of add a pop sensibility into the music, because I feel like that probably helped them out. It's like they were Green Day before Green Day. Formed in Bolton in 76. Where is Bolton? Bolton. Greater Manchester. They are from Manchester. Okay. I feel like whenever uh, there's, a, there's a musical genre and an artist comes along and adds some catchy melodies into it, it becomes a huge thing. And the rest of the community hates them for it, but they have success. And I mean, you can't deny a catchy melody, you know? You can't deny it. It's like it hypnotizes you. It gets in your brain. It's almost like a math thing. You, you, can't, you can't deny it. I just said that, but I can't think of a better word. Number three, The Damned. I've heard of them. To many, The Damned are like the godfathers of punk, claiming the accolade of first ever punk single released with New Rose, an album with Damned, Damned, Damned. The drummer's smoking. they were smoking. more than simply the yeah. first, with their unique gothic tone that would amp up to maximum punk rock overdrive at times, and then plummet to somber gloomy lows at others, all spearheaded by the bespoke vocals of David Banyan. Although their first album was as like impactful punk? as anything, it's usually their third album, Machine Gun Etiquette, that sticks in the heads of fans for pure versatility. Even though they technically helped start the punk rock era, they were already very much ahead of it from the beginning. Okay, yeah. So I guess they started as a punk band, but then they became a little slicker. They sold out. As many would say, but not me. Their third album, that doesn't sound like punk at all. It has those 80s clean guitars with the chorus effect on them. Again, another great name for a punk band. The Damned. Or a metal band. Or a barbershop quartet. Number two, Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols. There they are. From the first time Johnny Rotten screamed God Save the Queen, they were halfway to becoming one of the most iconic bands not just in punk, but in musical history. Mm. The Sex Pistols spat in the face of conformists and have become a survival guide for anyone wanting to immerse themselves in punk, be it with their brilliantly on-topic and volatile tracks like Anarchy in the UK and Bodies, or Safety Pin Garnish Dress Sense. This is Safety Pins. From rebellious lip-raising bass player Sid Vicious to the distaste for the aforementioned The Damned, the Sex Pistols were a band you wouldn't mess with and have got more backroom stories than anyone. Ask the Sex Pistols who were the first punk band and see what happens. <laughs> oh, we dare ya. We dare ya. Yeah, his voice is iconic and kind of the perfect voice for a punk band. As rebellious as they wanted to be, the mainstream kind of accepted them. In a way, in a way, in, I mean the mainstream in terms of music history, maybe not like the Billboard Top 100, but they had some poppy melodies. They like to present themselves as being totally offensive, but there's some pop melodies in there. I saw a video recently uh, asking the question if Sid Vicious was a good bass player. Well, Sid was in the band, but he couldn't really play. and. Thank God when we was doing Nevermind the Bollocks, he was in hospital with yellow jaundice. Let's get, maybe get Steve to try the bass on it. Yeah, like, just to sort of have some idea of like where we were going, what we were going to do. And the very last thing Steve would do would be to put his bass on the bottom underneath all of his guitars. So there you go. Steve played on the recordings. The guitar player played the bass. From the people who made the record, Sid Vicious did not play on the record. Who's number one? Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Subhumans, okay. The Ruts, no, I don't know. <laughs> they all sound like The Clash to me. Number one, The Clash. Okay. 
See, this song doesn't sound the like had a pop to me. musical journey is a bit of an understatement. Although mm. earlier singles like White Riot and Janie Jones oozed the quintessential characteristics of punk rock, their later guitar riff-led tunes helped shape the direction of the growing genre, and it all hinged on their third album, London Calling. This record opened up new doors that nobody even knew existed. Sure, similar to the jam, their music contorted and burst out of the constraints of pure punk rock, but they still stayed very much cemented in their anarchic roots, and yet managed to incorporate elements of reggae, rockabilly, and funk as time went on. They were integral to structuring the DNA in the evolution of punk. It's as simple mm. as that. Do you agree with our well, picks? Check sure. out these other great clips from Watch Mojo UK. Yeah, they're... I know them originally from Rock the Casbar, which doesn't sound like punk at all. But I guess they're saying that their earlier albums did sound more punky, and they evolved. They still kept that uh, punk attitude, though, and the look. They look like a punk band, even though they're playing clean guitars and talking about Casbars. They were formed in London in 1976. Reggae, dub, funk, ska, and rockabilly. They contributed to the post-punk and new wave movements that followed punk. New wave movements. Oh, London Calling was experimental, they say. Wow, 79? It sounds so 80s to my ear. But I guess that's the thing, they were ahead. Oh, Rolling Stone named London Calling the best album of the 80s, even though it came out in the 70s. Oh, Rock the Casbah came out in 82. Okay, okay. What's up with Joe Strummer? What happened to him? He died in 2002. My hell. He died from a heart attack caused by an undiagnosed congenital heart defect. He had a million pounds when he died, so he must have been doing all right. Way to go, Joe. You did it. Great list. I haven't heard of most of these bands. I got some new bands to listen to now, I guess. Crazy. So many punk bands. Anyway, thank you all for watching this with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.